Hey YouTubers, just got to show you my uh, next, my latest biggest exciting find. This is this massive pecan tree right here in town. I drove by, um, oh, a little over a week ago now, and I saw the folks out here cutting it up. Of course, I didn't know whose it was or that they I didn't even know it was dead. I thought it was just dormant for the winter. Anyway, you know, I, um, late last year, there was another big tree, pecan tree like this that got cut down right here in town. And I sat there and looked at it in a burn pile for months. It laid there in a burn pile. And I kept kind of trying to get a hold of the landowner, working through the realtor, could never get a hold of anybody. And then finally one day I just drive by and it's just burning, you know, so shameful loss. I wasn't gonna let that happen this time. So lucky for me, the people that own the property have these cars sitting up here for sale with the number on the windshield. So I called them and you know asked them what they were going to do with it. She said, oh, we're just going to burn it. I said, don't, don't please, I want it. So let's see how big this puppy is. The short axis is right at 29 inches. Now you can see it's hollowed out a little bit here at the base and on the butt log, but I don't think that goes all the way up. I think it's going to be just right here in this first section we'll see so unfortunately they already blocked part of it they they bucked this bottom butt log um so we've got a piece that's not quite four feet and this other piece i think is going to be right at about five feet let's see if i can hook my tape on something yeah right at five feet um but still you know there's there's plenty of use for short boards especially when they're good quality boards um but then what we've got is all these upper limbs that are all still huge all these crotch sections i mean this this is one of the branches that they cut off and it's you know 16 inches across um i mean these crotches have all sorts of crazy characters some of them are so dang big i'm not even going to be able to <clears throat> put them on my sawmill i'm gonna have to split them with a chainsaw if you take just this piece you know from here to here the diameter on it's massive i'll have I'll only be able to handle it with the excavator um and yeah, I'm going to have to do some crazy work with it. It'll end up being smaller pieces than I would like, you know, for cool crotch sections. But I just don't have a great big sawmill, you know, like Matt Cremona or somebody like that that can make these great big slabs. But here, you know, you got another big crotch here. It's a three-way split. There's a limb on the ground. This one coming out the side and that one going out there. These big limbs up here, you know, that are, that are branching off. So this is the first main fork in the tree. I guess second main fork. This is... 16, 18 inches, you know what I mean? So there's there's still a decent log just right in here. You know, that's an, that's an eight foot, 16 inch log. So anyway, just wanted to show it off and brag for a little bit. Let's see that, ooh, that looks like it busted there when it hit the ground, it's cracked. So hopefully it's not too dry rotted. It doesn't really look too rotten. I mean, it still had the good fresh red color to it when they had it cut fresh. It's starting to dull now, but yeah. So anyway, for today, I'm just gonna be bucking it up the rest of the way. Um, enough that I can handle it and move it and then I'll be headed down to Neil's here as soon as I can to get the grapple truck and then we'll haul this baby home so anyway I just want to introduce you to it um, I'm not going to make you guys watch me run a chainsaw but uh, like I said just want to make a little inter introduction here and then we'll uh, we'll probably give you a follow-up when we actually get it home okay well um, Making a few cuts that I had to do went way faster than I planned, really, which is good. Uh, and so I actually had a little extra time, so I ran back home and I got the tractor. Now my plan to move all these logs was to go down and get Neil's truck. So I wanted to make the cuts and everything so I was ready so I could expedite when I go get his truck, just drive in, grab the logs, take them home, and up and be done. Um, so I went in and got all the cuts made. I got the tractor, pushed everything together into a, you know just kind of a rough pile as best I could to get it all in one spot. And I went ahead and shoved up all the brush and blocks what i could just to kind of help these folks out i don't know if they wanted me to or not but hopefully i didn't mess up some master plan that they had <laughs> they do still have one little pile of firewood i left over here separate but 
here's all the logs and chunks that I'm going to try to take home and do something with. We'll see. But I got a new game plan. So just coming into town, um, there's, a, there's a small crew doing a little bit of logging right here on the south side of town. And they've got like a little, you know, I don't know, F650 size, like two ton little truck with a grapple on it. Um, and they got a skid loader and they got everything out there. It doesn't really look like they're working a whole lot. So I'm going to try to run over there right now and talk to them and just see if, hey, you know, can I throw a hundred bucks at you guys and uh, have you go move the blocks home for me? Otherwise, it's going to take me, you know, every bit of six hours to, to drive down to Neil's in my pickup, get the log truck, drive it back up here, pick up the logs, take them home, dump them, take the log truck back to Neil's, get my pickup, drive back home. Uh, so it's definitely worth it. So anyway, I'm going to go see. It never hurts to ask, right? Hey, maybe they do it cheaper. If they're not doing anything else, they might come snatch them and be happy to do it. All right. Well, well, well. <clears throat> my uh, logging crew idea worked exactly as I had hoped. 100 bucks and they ran their skid loader down the road about a half a mile and loaded the big ones for me so here's those two big butt chunks taking up the whole front of the trailer here's that one massive crotch that i still don't even know how the heck i'm gonna <laughs> split the thing on the sawmill there's no good way because it's a triple split there's it's not like i can just knock off one side and then still get it um i honestly i don't know I may have to, you know, get a, I may have to just get a big chainsaw from somebody and rip the whole thing in half with a chainsaw just to be able to work on it. But, you know, it, it forks out there. Basically, wait, maybe that's not the triplet. Is this, oh, this is the triplet here. This is the triplet. One, two, three. But similar situation. I really don't know <clears throat> what I'm going to be able to get out of this stuff. This one's just one big split. Um... Maybe if I, if I just knock that edge off there, if I knock that fork off, I think then I can get, you know, trim up trim up this little nub and trim up that little nub. And then I think I can get the rest of it on the mill. But, man, great big. Look at that curve I cut. Look how, look how bad that curve is. Thought I had the saw nice and sharp, but doesn't look like it there. Anyway, so I've got these four big chunks on the trailer. I've got to try to get a chain on the tractor and just snatch them off here any way that I can. And then all the smaller stuff that I cut up is still up there on the ground. We didn't load it because the trailer's already loaded with just this stuff on here. So we didn't load the smaller stuff, but I'll go back. I can get all of it with the tractor just fine, but I'm happy to have had those guys come pick this stuff up and set it on here for me. I just know that, I know Rita just wouldn't have lifted it. She might have lifted these, but... I really don't think so. I, I know for, there's no way she'd have picked that up. Maybe she'd have handled that. Anyway, I don't really care. Um, so I'll show you guys how I'm dragging off this one biggest piece. These are little games I have to play to maximize my tractor. I cannot pick it up. I tried to pick it up, and I was able to pick up the one end of it. Um, but then when I started trying to back up, the tractor wanted to stand on its nose. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm setting my bucket down a little bit, and I'm backing up. Full attention against the chain until I'm just right there where the tractor starts to dive. You see, I've got my bucket curled down. And now I'm sitting here with my foot on the brake in neutral, and I'm going to curl the bucket up. And when I do that, it starts to pick up a little bit on the log, but it also starts to pull it towards me a little bit as that bucket comes back. And you can see we're just inching it off there. But I still can't, if I try to actually start backing up, driving with it, then my whole back end comes off the ground. Uh oh, now I might have just lost it anyway. Um, I'm going to hop off here and redo my chain. It looks like we're almost off the trailer except for the far end. I'm going to redo my chain around the girth of it right now so I can drag it back a little better. But I think now if I back up it's going to pop off. But I'll drag it back a little more safely away from the trailer and then we'll use the box blade and just shove it out of the way or use the bucket, whatever, just kind of roll it and shove it out of the way. But I just want to show you that little trick of using the bucket curl to really maximize your force without, you know, flipping the tractor over or doing something crazy like that and being able to pick up stuff that you otherwise can't pick up with the boom controls. <laughs> 